as iOS 14 comes out and as these, uh, these ad networks are going to go to war and Apple's going to release their own ad network and God knows what's coming next, right? Mm -hmm. But I can guarantee you that they're not going to share as much data as they have been over the years because they're going to become direct competitors of each other. So ultimately, the whole question becomes, um, you know, how many different channels can you break open? So today we have John Zacharias uh, from Grow Agency. Grow for, focuses on, on using SEO, organic search, uh, as a performance marketing tool. John, it is good to have you here. Thank you for, for taking the time. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so um, first you want to start out, just like maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us your background. Tell, you know, how, how did you get here? How did you get to using SEO for performance marketing? Cool. Yeah, it's an interesting question. So um, I grew up in Los Angeles. Um, you know, I was probably going to end up doing something in Hollywood. Um, you know, after uh, college, I went to Madison, Wisconsin. Um, you know, I wanted to stay on the family plan. So I went to law school. And um, when I was in law school, I was working for one of my dad's friends at a wage and hour class action firm in La Jolla. So we used to just sue people for not paying overtime. Um, for example, like Home Depot would classify 20,000 employees in Los Angeles or California as exempt from overtime, give them fancy job titles, a fancy job description, uh, and then classify them as exempt. When at the end of the day, all they were doing is standing in the stores and putting packages into different things. So we would sue them, you know, and these cases were worth a fortune. And, and, and so we would settle them for like $20 million. The law firm would make $5 million, um, you know, per case uh, in, in 2011, 2012. Uh, and we would be paying out a large percentage of that as a referral fee to other law firms. So, um, you know, I was very interested in what that large referral fee was. And so what I started doing was realizing that the other law firms were doing nothing more than actually just getting us the cases, the leads from Google and sending them over to us. And then we were litigating them, spending the money, doing everything, and then paying them a 25% referral fee. So I was like, look, forget practicing the law. I want to learn how to get the cases. And, and I became obsessed with getting the cases, which led me to Google organic search. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, and that's so funny. Cause yeah, I've been in that exact, I've been on the other side of that where we're selling legal leads or we're selling case referrals or uh, whatever. And, and it is, it's like, yeah, I don't have to litigate this at all. Just go find the case. Right. Oh, yeah. um, so cool. And yeah, Google's a great place for that because you know, that's what do you do when you need a, when you need a lawyer, like that's where you go. Um, so cool. Thank that. That's awesome. So we're going to sp focus specifically around e-commerce today. You know, our show, our show is sp sort of geared around direct to consumer e-commerce brands. I know you work with some of those, uh, at your agency. So if you're an e if I'm an e-commerce brand, I think typically we are, you know, Facebook or Instagram or, uh, influencers, Google ads, things like that. How, you know, how should I look about, how should I think, how should I look at, how should I think about e or SEO and how should I even like get started on it? Like what, you know, what are the first moves? What are some quick wins? I know quick wins is kind of like a, you know, we don't want to be too focused on quick wins and SEO, but what are some sort of like quick wins that most e-com brands could do? Okay. So, so a few things. So for, first of all, I call it organic search. Um, the reason why is because SEO has a negative connotation. Um, a lot of times people basically what they do is these SEO companies promise you to get you number one on Google for certain words. A lot of the times they have no idea whether or not they can actually get you number one. 90% of the times they can't because they're very competitive. And then what they do is they start buying these backlinks from other websites because it's the easiest way to get them. Um, I don't know if, uh, if you're not familiar, um, Google cares a lot about what other websites are talking about your website. The way that one website would talk about another website is through basically building a link to them. Um, am I able to share my screen during this so I can uh, screen share some stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. I think that'll help a lot. Cool. So anyways, what I'm saying is, is that our job is to get a lot of other websites to talk about our clients' websites so that their product pages start showing up higher on Google. Also, while you're doing that, just take one step back. So we were doing SEO or organic search for a lot of big law firms, the Jacobys and Myers of the world, so right? The, the big ones, uh, right? That you see all over California. Um, and then we linked up with these guys and they basically asked us if the strategies would work on, um, on a uh, direct-to-consumer e-commerce brand called Funboy. Um, and Funboy sells, the, sells those pool floats, the ones that you see the Kardashians on uh, with the unicorn in the pool. Um, and I looked into it 
And what was so funny was that whereas historically um, organic search was overcrowded because every lawyer, I mean, you have a hundred lawyers in every zip code and each have, you know, five, $10,000 a month to throw at organic search, right? So those markets were oversaturated. There was no one doing organic search in the um, uh, D2C world. And the reason why was because um, the big brands like the, uh, you know, let's call it like uh, Walmart doesn't need to do organic search. Everybody's already looking for Walmart. So anything that they're doing on Google is just to make sure that they're protecting their own brand, right? That left a, a, a wide open hole for these small direct to consumer brands to essentially jump in and dominate their specific niche in a specific field. Sure enough, we were able to get Funboy into the top three organic listings on Google when you Google pull floats, um, which I would like to demonstrate if you guys can uh, let me share my screen. Um, and then what ended up happening was, is that exploded the business. So literally, you know, they started getting 110,000 users a month of people that are just looking for pool floats, right? And they're going, oh my God, this is crazy. And why didn't uh, Walmart do this? They also sell pool floats. And why doesn't Amazon do this? They also sell pool floats. Here's why. Pool floats are more important to Funboy than they are to Amazon and Walmart. It, to Amazon and Walmart, it's just one tiny skew. So if you really care about a certain product or a keyword or a category, we can beat those big sites for that specific category. No, I'm not promising you that we'll beat them for every category. Otherwise, we'd be Amazon. But for example, if we want to just choose bath bombs or women's Oxford shoes or roses that last a year or pool floats or massage gun or, you know, uh, uh, clean cookware or clean makeup or any of these hot categories, we're able to essentially steal the top of Google and dominate it for these people. Um, just to show you guys an example of what I'm talking about. Again, anybody can find this data. All the data I'm going to show during this presentation is public information. Anybody can find it. But here we are, number two, you know, beating Target, um, competing with Amazon, beating Walmart, beating the Spruce. I mean, these are monstrous sites, right? So now you have a direct-to-consumer brand that's a small mom and pop shop that's able to compete, if not beat Walmart, Target, and Amazon for incredibly competitive awards in a certain niche. Right. So, yeah, like, I mean, very viable uh, strategy for e-commerce, um, especially e-commerce. So I'd imagine like if you're already in a, in a niche where it's like Google ads are going to be pretty viable for you. Search ads are going to be pretty viable for you. Um, you know, there is search demand for this. Or if you're on Amazon, like if you're an Amazon seller, uh, this is a pretty like organic search is a, a really strong kind of like uh, strategy for your DTC side. So tell me how much scale is there here? So like, for example, you know, let's follow your pool floats example. You're like, okay, there's about 10,000 people a month searching for uh, pool floats. That's good. That's super high quality traffic. But, you know, uh, what if it's a brand? I mean, is this just sort of something that's like, hey, we're going to be limited to the qualified searches and scale or can this scale out? Like what, what does scale look like for, any, for a DTC brand? Got it. So I want, so I don't just focus on organic search. Okay. We focus, everyone knows, you know, who's watching this or, or, or anyone who's on this call that um, omni channel is, is, is the future of everything. You, you can't just be on one platform. You will get destroyed. And also who, what, who wants to build a business on one platform? So you need to understand how a funnel works as a whole to be a good marketer and where organic search plugs into that funnel. Okay. So I'm going to tell you guys a story. It's a funny story, um, but it's, uh, it's a good example of how uh, big this can go and, and, and how important organic search can be, okay? So we have a client that sells human-grade dog food, okay? Uh, what am I saying? They cook the food and bring it to your dog, you know, weekly or daily. It's incredibly expensive, way more expensive than the traditional dog food that you get at, like, Pet Mart, right? But we pitch them on, you guys need to be number one for small hypoallergenic dogs, and the reason why I'm telling you guys it's funny is because this big, tough CEO looks at me and goes, are you crazy? I don't sell poodles. I sell dog food. Why would I want to be number one for micro poodle? And I had to explain to him because the same person that's going to buy a micro poodle for $15,000, right, is the only person I know who's going to spend that kind of money on dog food. So if we can pick them off in their journey to find the dog, we can then use other channels like Facebook retargeting and Instagram retargeting and YouTube retargeting to convert them into a user. So what am I trying to explain to you? 
Organic search is incredible for top of funnel traffic, okay? Uh, if you look at the history of Facebook, you could have literally put up a box on Facebook in 2014 with nothing in it and sold it at a 10X ROAS, right? Like the market was huge. No one was doing ads. Um, ultimately, uh, you know, that's why you have brands like Theragun and Ritual and Venus at Fleur that really popped off early because they were the first ones onto Facebook, right? Then Facebook came up with this incredible idea. We have so much data on these users that bought Venus at Fleur. We can use, which, which by the way, are those roses that last year, those box roses that you see all over Facebook and Instagram and Valentine's Day and, and et cetera. And so anyways, people would go, we have so much data on the people that bought it. And we have so much data on 2 billion other people. Let's start comparing the data using AI and we'll call it a lookalike audience. And we'll go out and we'll find other people that are similar to the people that purchased your products. And they started doing that and some brands scaled to the moon. You know what I mean? Like it worked like a charm. Here's the problem. VC funds have a lot of money. There's a lot of money going back into capital and the consumer products. And ultimately other brands start to figure out what you're doing and they copy you. So first you have Theragun. It's the only massage gun on the market. Then you, so you have Theragun, it's the only massage gun on the market. Then you have Hyperbolt, then you have Tim, and now there's literally so many that you can't even count them. So what does that do to marketing costs? It specifically targets top of funnel traffic. Prospecting becomes so expensive that the cost per thousand views for new viewers goes from $1 to $4 to $10 to $20. Some of these biggest brands that we work with that do $200 million in revenue a year, literally can't even be profitable on Facebook prospect anymore. They need to find traffic from new sources, okay? So going back to the example that I gave earlier, you Google small hypoallergenic dogs, and one of the clients called Ollie that we work with has what's called the featured snippet. They are the definitive answer to the question, okay? And every month you have about, you know, 100,000 people that, who are looking for a you know, a miniature schnauzer or Bichon Fries or a schnitzu or a toy poodle or a, you know, a Highland Terrier on your website and reading the articles. And again, I'm not going to give numbers specifically, but I'm going to tell you that we're not relying on first click attribution. Where we really, really crush it is when people come there, they read the article, then they go somewhere else and they get the dog, they buy the micro doodle, right? And then they're seeing our ads on Facebook and Instagram through retargeting because we already found them when they were looking for the dog in the first place. That way you're using Google search for prospecting. So really the question that you asked to answer your question is, it is scalable to the extent that you can find queries that people that are in your target market would be searching for. Another example is we do for Yext, right? You guys know what Yext is? Uh-huh. Yeah. So we do Yex as a search. We pitch them on, you guys should be number one for like everything related to marketing, right? Like, like Google AdWords, the ultimate guide. And the guy was like, why would we sell like local listings and, and questions and answers? We don't want to be number one for Google. We're not doing AdWords. I go, because if somebody's looking for AdWords, really what they're saying is I want a way to market my company, right? And Yex provides a solution to market your company online. So anybody who's looking for Google AdWords would potentially be interested in Yex. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, I, like kind of to sum up what you said, like really pulling in pool floats example, pulling in that, uh, the dog food example, like it's levels of awareness or, or uh, the Google calls them like in levels of intent keywords, right? Um, so like, you know, buy pool float or buy this pool float, like specific type of pool float. It's a really high intent keyword, but it's really low volume, right? So you want to like, Kind of first things first like you were sort of saying first things first is like you can usually beat amazon you can usually beat target those big players who rank for that now you can usually beat them for that and and that's like your quickest win but like in terms of scaling in terms of like growing long term it's uh seo around content on your site uh content that ranks for like not super high intent keywords but kind of fat head keywords that have a lot of search volume and then create custom audiences on the blog called blog. Right. We target only to those audiences yeah. and calculate ROI by revenue from the blog, less, right, minus um, the cost of the retargeting, yeah. minus the SEO fee. And that's your true ROI on organic search. And with 90% of our clients, 
we've been able to get them positive um, in the first six months where, where the blog is generating more revenue than it's costing them. And then it just becomes like a game of real estate. How much, how much property on Google can we own and how fast can we own it? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So how, where in the funnel do you focus? So like we have, uh, I mean, we focus on paid traffic, obviously, uh, we have like, you know, some clients where we're, we're actually driving ad traffic to blog articles. Typically they're blog articles that are a little bit more like not so high, high awareness or, or not so low intent is like the dog food example you gave is like, you know, they're, they're really, you know, they're a ways away probably from buying dog food. Um, like we might be, like, for example, we uh, have, a, have a baby brand that we work with where we send uh, Facebook ads to an article that's like, you know, f five essential pieces of, of clothing you need for, I, I'm butchering it, five essential ba like pieces of baby clothing that, you're, that you need for newborns, right? So it's kind of targeting pregnant women or, or women who are having or who have like just had a, had a baby. Yeah. Um, and what CPMs can go down because, uh, or, or clicks, cost per click can go down because you're sending them to good content. So it's like, it's almost like a quality score on Google AdWords, same concept. Yeah. So, so we'll have like a, we actually get like a solid cost per, like are we hit our cost per acquisition target doing that? Right. Cause we link to products right there in the article and like on prospecting, we can hit our cost on that brand. Not every brand can hit its CPA target doing that or, or it's yeah. target doing that. But like, do you mix that in, uh, into your strategy? Like, are you sending any prospecting, uh, traffic to these articles? Or are you primarily just like, no, these are designed to get traffic off of Google. Um, so yeah, we do. And, and, and again, we do have, again, no one's tried more stuff than us. I can promise you. Right, that. Yeah. So, so like, I, I guess I'm wondering, does that help its ranking, right? Like if you're sending traffic to it, uh, paid traffic to it. Does it. not help. So, so, so Google has recently released what's called, so I want you guys to th remember the social dilemma, right? Mm -hmm. um, whoever's seen the social dilemma, Google works pretty similar now in the fact that the same factors and triggers are required to get you to the top of Google as have always been. But you will not stay there unless people enjoy your content. And they have an update called Google Rank Brain, okay? And what Google Rank Brain looks at is bounce rate and, and, and um, page speed time and, and how long people are staying on the page, et cetera, right? So the worst thing that can happen to you is, is that somebody goes to your site and goes, women's Oxford shoes, right? And then what ends up happening is, is that they go here and they go, oh, not what I was like. And then they click back, right? Basically what that's doing is that's indicating directly to Google that, that, that the intent did, of the page didn't match what the user was looking for. So by sending other traffic to that page, you can get the benefit of getting good signals being sent back, but half those community believes that Google's not looking at it unless it comes from Google. And the other half believes that um, Google's looking at all of the traffic. So again, the answer to your question is, is that, um, you know, nobody knows the definitive answer to that. Right. I would say that because Google's entire mission is to figure out what types of traffic, uh, what types of sites people really love, right? Ultimately, Google starts showing sites that people saw, that people hate, people stop trusting Google. So I would guess that they're probably looking at all of the page traffic that they trust and seeing how people are reacting to those pages. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. Cool. Um, so uh, you talked a little bit about link building earlier. Um, so I think that, you know, SEO, uh, or sorry, organic search, we'll say it right. Uh, organic search, super common strategy that it, like people lean really heavily on and the SaaS space, um, you know, information space, stuff like that, SaaS especially. Um, talk to me a little bit about, and, and so there's tons of information out, about, out there about like link building tactics, how you can earn links, things like that. Um, talk to me specifically about link building. What is your guys', how much do you guys focus on link building? Do you focus on link building or do you just focus on content? And maybe how, how is your link building, how are your link building efforts different in the e-com world versus, uh, you know, in, in like a SaaS world or in uh, the other, you know, place that organic search is huge is in just content sites, right? Um, so yeah, is, is there a different approach to link building right. for e Okay, so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, link building is a very sensitive subject. Okay, link building is what essentially got me obsessed with organic search um, right. because back in the day, you used to be able to just buy links in the footers of websites. Okay. And then what would end up happening is, is that your site would end up ranking pretty high 
um, you know, no matter what happened. And the reason why was because uh, I'm going to try to show you guys some stuff right here. But the, the reason why was because you didn't have to do much. You, you could literally just go ahead and you could um, you, you didn't have to do much. You could go ahead and just build links and then you would automatically start to rank really, really high for this kind of stuff. So I'm going to try to find some links really quickly. Uh, links for December. Legal back links, got it. Hold on. So I'm gonna show you guys like just what I'm talking about, just so it makes more sense. Okay. So basically, um, let me share my screen. Got it. Um, and not and and, and then this is get, you guys are getting 12 years of uh, kind of experience here. So uh -huh. you can still do this. Okay. Do you see when you go, you see this sidebar link that says commercial truck financing? Yep. Do you see how when you click on it, it takes you to this page, First Capital Finance? Yep. Do you see how when you go to Google and you type in commercial? truck financing how i haven't looked at this in a while yeah you see how first capital finance still pops up right like number four or five yep the reason why they're popping up so high is because they're buying links on the sidebars of websites yeah this is highly illegal and you want to know why it's highly illegal because it's highly effective yeah. so they're probably at some point in time going to receive what's called a manual penalty from google where somebody complains or Google figures out that they're buying these links and what's going to happen is they're going to wake up one day and literally their site is gone. I mean, you Google, yeah, first, the index. Yep. you Google first capital finance, they don't even show up for their own brand name. They're dead to Google. That's a whole process to get that back. And honestly, between us, you'll never get it back. You might get back for your own name. You're never going to get non-branded traffic. You get put into a black box for so many years that it's so crazy, right? So because we have seen that before, we look at link acquisition like a presidential election, okay? Um, normal presidential election, at least. Don't think about the most recent ones, right? So anyways, um, you can win the link building game, uh, aka the presidential election, and you can lose the popular vote. You don't need the most links. You just need the good ones, right? You need the electoral college votes. You need the MSN, the Yahoo Finances, the Forbes, right? Google really trusts those and the amount of authorities that they have are just unbelievable. Like, they, like you get one MSN link and you can rank number one for incredibly competitive keywords. We do all of our link acquisition through reporter outreach. So because we represent a lot of big celebrities and influencers, we have reporters reaching out to us literally all day long for quotes. For example, we do parishilton.com, right? People want quotes from her all the time. And so we might say, look, we don't have a quote about... Um, from Paris, but we have a quote from, uh, from Caraway Home about like uh, cooking, right? And so what we're doing is, is that we're feeding and we built relationships with thousands and thousands of reporters over the last three years by doing this. So our entire link building strategy is based on reporter outreach. We never buy links. We just build them naturally, okay? So this is a client and in one month, we're able to get them featured on US News, Yahoo Finance, Yahoo News, MSN, Yahoo. Insider, Business Insider, Business Insider, Project Hatch, Edible Arrangements, The Inventory, and Eat This, right? This is a food recipe site. So the way that these links look is we get wind of the fact that Edible Arrangements is essentially writing a story on 32 foodies, nutrition experts, and fitness pros share their favorite blueberry smoothie recipes, right? And we pitch them a quote on behalf of our client, Jessica. She gets quoted in the article with a link back to her website, okay? A side bowl is a very, very competitive keyword that she wanted to, that they wanted to rank for. So ultimately what we did is we put a link to this page on the homepage. So what ends up happening is that link equity that's hitting the homepage ends up passing through the transitive property to the side bowl page. When you go to Google and you search for a side bowl, we have the number one result. And we have the number one recipe. So we have two results on the top of Google for an incredibly difficult keyword. And I'm showing you guys right now, the value of this page is to, for them to buy the same amount of traffic that it would cost them organically, it would cost them $400,000 a month if they were buying this traffic from Google AdWords, just for this one page. So we really look at it like a performance marketing channel. Would you rather spend $400,000 a month or a small SEO fee for the same amount of clicks? It's a, it's a legitimate growth hack. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it, that's interesting. So on those competitive keywords, so yeah, I mean, you guys have 
essentially a reporter network that can get you links on uh, on, on very like high authority sites. Um, so on those competitive keywords, how long is it typically taking like a brand like that to, to rank for something like that? I mean, it's, it's an incredible, it, it depends on how good the content is, how many good links they have. But I would say realistically, um, within one year, you can start to rank for incredibly difficult and competitive keywords. Mm -hmm. awesome. you know, like another, another, example, another example that I love to give is, is that um, there's a site called uh, USARX. It's, it, it's a good RX competitor. And basically, you'll notice here, we've been able to get this website up to about $330,000, $40,000 a month in value. When we started with it in, Jan in January of last year, it was worth $700 a month, okay? And, and, and so today, it would be equivalent to them buying, you know, three to $400,000 a month. And if you look at the ramp up, let's look at a ramp up here. So three months in, we're able to get it up to $5,000 in value, right? Six months in, oh, geez, uh, five months in, it was 100. So this is when it started to break open. And then it went up and down a little bit. And then like a year, we're back to, a, we're about 130. And then it really starts to pop off, right? Like we proved to Google that we're not joking around. We're building good content. And today it's worth, you know, over um, $300,000 a month. And again, they didn't have the budget to buy 85,000 visitors a month. It would have costed them 324,000. Look who they're competing against. They're competing against Vivance, Broncade, um, uh, Xanax, um, uh, you know, uh, Finistrade, which is like a hair pill, Propecia, right? Like um, Accutane. I mean, they're going up against literally the biggest pharmaceutical companies on planet Earth and beating them in, in a year or competing with them in a year. And that's what's so incredible about this channel. So the truth is, is that it takes about six months to start really seeing the results. And then it takes about a year until you start really competing for top positions. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um, so can you, I mean, do you have examples of, of that kind of same strategy? Like, let's say if the brand doesn't necessarily have like a person or a personal, uh, like a, a, a like person personality, does that make sense? So like a doe lashes type brand or something where it's not, you know, it's not coming from um, the brand. The quote isn't going to come from the, from a person. I don't know. Is there, does that make sense? Oh, you mean the, the reporter outreach stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we need a person. This is real stuff. So we need, it doesn't have to be the founder. It, it could be the head of marketing. It, it could be anybody, but, but we definitely need a real person. <laughs> right. So there has to be a person tied to the brand. That makes sense. Yes. Okay. Which by the way, which by the way, creates PR as well. So now you can say as featured in edible right. arrangements, Yahoo finance, MS. So it, there's, there's so many ways to, to benefit from this. Getting featured in the news five to six to seven times a month is, you know, works in a lot of different benefits. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cool. Well, I mean, I think this is super helpful. Like, I guess if you had maybe, um, this is sort of how we end everything. Um, so we'll, we'll just do a couple more things. We can, uh, real quick, maybe tell people how, uh, they can find you. And then we'll do like one last sort of parting shot. If you were kind of give advice to people who have DTC brands who are, are thinking about SEO as a channel. Um, yeah. Like, that. like what's a good way to assess? Yeah. Um, so you find us on gr0.com. Uh, GRO, it's three digits. Um, easy. Uh, we have we work with the biggest direct to consumer brands um, across our brands. We're doing you know uh, you know ten to twenty billion dollars in revenue per year. So in other words, across all channels. So so we work with like you know some of the best ones in the world. Um, we're incredibly good at creating brand voices. Uh, we have incredible chief and editors that we've hired from the biggest magazines on planet Earth to make sure that we come in and we can write for these brands. Um, even if you bring SEO in house. If you find somebody good, it costs you, you know, what, $120,000 a year, so $10,000 a month, but they still have to buy content. They're not going to write the content. They still have to figure out how to get the links. So it does, it, it's one of the few channels that doesn't make sense to bring in house. You need to hire an expert at least for the first year to get the strategy right. Once you have the strategy right, there's certain situations where it may make sense to bring the writing in house. But really, you want to outsource SEO and learn the strategy from people that have all the data. We have an anonymized data warehouse. We see trends across every single industry. So, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, cookware, makeup, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, dog food, dog supply, it doesn't matter. We can see, oh, when you do this, this happens. 
And that's what makes it so valuable to work with us is that we're seeing what's going on across, you know, 300 of the biggest direct-to-consumer e-commerce sites on planet Earth. Um, and uh, uh, happy to give private demos to anybody that wants to kind of like dig in a little bit deeper and ask me certain questions about how this works or why it works or that type of thing. Um, my advice is, is that it's very simple. If you can afford the service, it's incredible. If it's going to kill you and the brand is on tilt, I would hold off until it's more stabilized to do it. Again, would you buy a piece of real estate with your last $5,000 in your bank account? Right. Yeah. Probably. And how do you pay rent? Right. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, you want to be at a stage where um, you can economically afford to pay for it without waking up every morning and feel like somebody's driving a screwdriver into your back and turning right. it. Right. Can you, but if you can, it is the best investment that you will ever make. Just to, just to kind of run some, down some of the stuff real quick as a final run through. For example, you know, ritual.com, my partner, Kevin started working with them early in the process. It's a women's vitamins company. Um, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and basically when we started working with them in January of 2019, you know, their website was worth $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month. Today, their website is worth $410,000 a month. So yeah. again, we're unlocking about $400,000 worth of clicks for a, a month of the SEO fee. And, and that's what's so incredible about it. And one more thing I want to show you guys is that basically what we build out our blog section. So we didn't do this one, but I just, cause I'm talking about it. Like, so we build this out for brands, right? Like, like they don't have a blog section. And then when you Google something like prenatal vegan vitamins, ritual pops up and it's specifically the blog post that we help them write okay. so we're creating blogs that are beautiful and then we're driving traffic to them through article writing and, and you're it, helping them you're probably helping them uh like optimize the blog to drive more like deeper funnel actions as well yes exactly awesome yeah thank you yeah i i agree like if you're kind of thinking about it looking at seo um yeah i mean you know you could go about it yourself most likely, unless you have a background in SEO, you know, like most likely better to just hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like you wouldn't buy your, your, you know, a piece of real estate with your last $5,000. Can you, do you know your brand can play the long game is the question, right? Correct. Like yeah, if correct. you, if you're in a position where, Hey, we need, you know, Facebook ads to drive this much volume this month, or we're going to be out of business, uh, then probably like, you know, you need to hold on to cash. Right. And, it's going to be tough. It might be tough to get off that treadmill, but you, you also might not be in a position where you can really like invest the dollars for three months, four months, five months, six months before you start seeing the return. So absolutely. Put it like this. Put it like this. Nobody's upset that they bought a piece of real estate in Malibu in the 1970s. Right. right? So, so I look at Google search like Malibu in the 1970s. No, people who bought the real estate did not want to invest the money at the time. Right. right. But the ones that could afford to, did it and look what happened. It's the same type of concept, right? Like as iOS 14 comes out and as these, uh, these ad networks are gonna go to war and Apple's gonna release their own ad network and God knows what's coming next, right? Mm -hmm. But I can guarantee you that they're not gonna share as much data as they have been over the years because they're gonna become direct competitors of each other. So yeah. ultimately the whole question becomes, um, you know, how many different channels can you break open, right? And, and so this is a viable channel. It is an incredible channel. And then the last and the most important thing I want to talk to you guys about and leave you guys with is, is that you can also control what shows up when um, the brand is, is, is searched for. So like, obviously, if you're spending a million dollars a month on Facebook, you have 100,000 people a month searching for you on Google. So if you don't have five-star reviews popping up when your brand is searched for, right, ultimately, it's going to cause people not to buy. So another thing that we're really big into is basically making sure that the search results look good when people search, right? Obviously on every brand, there's a lot of really good stuff out there. And there's obviously a lot of really bad stuff out there, right? So we just make sure that the good stuff goes up and, you know, and, and, and yada, yada, yada. And that helps drive conversion rate on brand searches a lot. Absolutely. Well, John, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time. Appreciate talking uh, some, some e-com SEO with us. Uh, so that was gr0.com. If you guys want to talk with John Moore, see if that uh, organic search strategy might be, might be the right route for your brand. And uh, yeah, we will, we'll see you guys next time.
Thanks, guys. Thanks for the time.